Biobalance HealthCast, episode 242, Statins and Estrogen. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. The word estrogen is often considered to be a bad thing. And it isn't a bad thing, it's a necessary thing. And there are so many good things about having estrogen in the appropriate amounts at the appropriate times to to be a functional person, functional woman. And as women age, they lose their ability to manufacture estrogen, but it can be replaced. That's a very controversial thing. It's controversial primarily because of the Women's Health Initiative in 2002 that was canceled early had erroneous conclusions, bad information, and yet was accepted as a revelation from on high about hormone replacement therapy. And as a result, thousands of doctors and tens of thousands of women panicked and moved away from estrogen replacement therapy. And haven't moved back. And have not yet moved back. And so Kathy and I continually revisit this topic in our podcast and in our book because it's so important that they begin to re-examine estrogen and the way they understand it and the way that it works. What we're finding as we continue to look at it is that most of the research that addresses estrogen addresses it parenthetically, incidentally. The research is titled and focused and aimed at something else like the impact of statin drugs. And then when they look at the data about which is a particular study we're going to be talking about today that looked at statin drugs, what they find is that women who took estrogen and statin drugs. And statin drugs uh, had interesting results that we'll that we'll talk about. Uh, had better results. Absolutely, St- better results than people who took nothing. Than people who took nothing. Nothing with a statin drug. Uh, so, and and then they they based their conclusion when they when they did the research and they summarized the data that they learned. The conclusion was still framed in terms of the impact of statin on your longevity, <laughs> and they ignored or denied the impact of estrogen. And yet there was a measurable difference between those that just took statins and those that took statins and estrogen, and I mean, those that took nothing. Right. I mean, it's it's amazing that they can do a study and have uh, they have a hundred thousand women years. Mm-hmm. All all of the women were taking statins, mm-hmm. and then half of them were taking um, estrogen replacement or hormone plus, plus hormone statin. replacement right. plus their statins. So when they looked at these two groups, the women who took the estrogen had a third of the cardiac. Uh, events Mm -hmm. and a third of the deaths from all causes I mean compared to women who took nothing they were safer Mm -hmm. which is amazing and that should have been the headline the headline should have been hormone replacement therapy saves your life Yes. On statins. I mean, obviously. But that's how I think if they did this study without the statins, they'd find the same thing because they have done Mm -hmm. similar studies without it. But interestingly enough, the title is, Is Menopausal Hormone Therapy Safe in Statin Users? Not... Not, I mean, is Not it safe? Which questions right. the use of estrogen? Right. Now, just it's think how many people negative. in the U.S. have died because of the WHI study. Right. Well, if, and around the world, there are some yeah, studies if, in Europe that show that estimate that some forty thousand women died but just early cardiac because disease. they came off because of cardiac problems. Right. And because and for all causes, mm-hmm. so it's safer to take hormone replacement therapy than it is. Not to take it, and not and enough women. That should and be the title. And and so we keep coming to revisit this to say to you: read our book, look at the research, go on Kathy's website, look at the articles that she pulls from all these different medical journals that say this, and get your attention, and then get your doctor's attention and say, yeah, but what about this research? Because they'll say, oh, because they learned in two thousand and two from the WHI study. Which the, the mass media just was all over because everybody was scared to death. Oh my God, we found this thing. It's out. headlines if you scare somebody. Oh yeah. It's not headlines if you say, "Oh, take your medicine; it saves your life." Yes. So, so they went for the headline. Well, and that's sad. And I, the study was done badly as well. But, but in any case, 
it is pervasive in the medical community. If you go to your doctor and you're on estrogen of any kind, well, why are you on estrogen? And why aren't you going off? I mean, that's a ridiculous question. Right. And they act they, they fe- act fearful when they ask you that question, like, oh, my God, you're going to drop dead right now. So people stop. And, and, they're and that's afraid of crazy. They heart should be issues. Af- they're afraid of cancer. They're afraid of both. What, they're what are afraid they afraid of, of heart issues because the WHI study did not report that as all the other studies have right. they said it slightly increased heart attacks but it well but it was canceled early they didn't complete the study they didn't complete the study but that had to do more with um, breast cancer right and that was only with the drug provera right it had nothing to do with estrogen the arm of the study that was estrogen had lower breast cancer rates than the than non-users than the people who had nothing. So that arm of the study continued. But it was the progesterone that was the problem. But in this case, they're they're looking at heart disease and people with statins. Maybe that changes things. But in any case, maybe the statins made people live longer. I doubt it. Most women have a lot of side effects from statins. Uh, however, it did. the estrogen didn't make them live longer. They've proven that and made them not die of a heart attack or any other reasons. Well, this is a journal of menopause and it's April 2015 issue. Right. They review this research that was done in Sweden with a large cohort of women who were taking statins and, and some were not taking anything else, some were not taking statins at all, and some mm-hmm. were uh, taking statins and estrogen. Mm-hmm. And what they concluded was, and, and it wasn't the bold headline lead, but it was a conclusion. Buried. Uh, people who replace <laughs> their hormones are less likely to die from all causes than people who do not. That should be the end of the conversation. And that should have been the title. <laughs> and that should have been the title. And that should be the, the and that should stimulate additional research to either challenge that or validate that. That's how these research protocols overlap because somebody will, for it to be scientific as a study, somebody's got to be able to replicate it. So if they do this study in Sweden, then we ought to be able to do the same study in the United States or the same study in Russia if we follow the same guidelines that they set mm-hmm. up for their study. And so if we can replicate it, then the conclusions are more believable and more genuine. And so now we need to do a replication of this study somewhere else mm-hmm. and see if the data holds. But based on what we see from Sweden, this conclusion is a conclusion that is startling and ought to be in headlines everywhere and isn't yet. What they what they headlined was, oh, statins do this yeah. or that. And, and or is it dangerous? Yeah. They made an implication to, right. that menopausal hormone replacement was dangerous. And then they, if you just read that, then you think, well, that's what the article is going to say. Yes. Well, and that's a lesson you ought to learn about reading mass media anyway. Headlines rarely talk about what's in the content of the article accurately. Headline writers uh, write their headlines to get attention uh, and to slant the view. And that's what they get paid to do. You read down in the nitty gritty of the article quite frequently, it, it challenges what the headline proclaims. I want to go back to your re- replicating of the study. Yeah. Now, I haven't seen, I have not seen a study that had statin right. and hormone replacement therapy. So that's new. But I've seen many other studies mm-hmm. who have shown, who have, after the WHI came out and before, that showed that estrogen replacement therapy decreased all death, yes. all causes of death. But why so, isn't that global statement spreading? Well, we see it in all these different studies, but right. for some reason no one's collated it and put it on the headline because... I don't know why. Well, actually. you do know one reason why, because we talk about it regularly, yeah. and that is that specialists tend to only read the journal of their specialty, and a lot of this research is done by other specialties. Mm-hmm. So gynecologist and general practitioners don't generally read the endocrine journals. Right, but this is a this is a GYN journal. This the is journal a GYN, of menopause this particular one. is a yeah. journal of GYN and a good one, but not one read by all gynecologists, right. one read by just gynecologists who have a special interest in older patients in menopause. Mm-hmm. So it's not it's not a, a journal like there's one journal that we all read every single month, and we've talked about that recently that has almost no information on estrogen at all. But that's the one everybody's reading. So most of this research doesn't make it to the GYN journals. 
Right. And menopause is, a, is an exception. And if you don't think you're the kind of person that could read medical journals and get much out of them, I would encourage you to read our book, The Secret Female Hormone, because yeah. in that book, we talk about estrogen and break it down into its component parts mm-hmm. and talk about we, what each of those parts do and why you need it. And, and we base what we have written on the research that has been done by others and that we've read and, and included, mm-hmm. and we cite our references. And so you can get that information in a more readable form by The Secret Female hormone which is available at all of the electronic distribution sources mm-hmm. and you can get a hard copy at bookstores like Barnes and Noble uh, or you can get it from Kathy's office if you're here local and you want to uh, mm-hmm. the, so, so, so that explains it it does but I, I want to go back to one logical thing before right. before we wrap it wrap this up because I find it unusual that I can find medical articles, I don't care where I find them. I mean, yeah. you, you can do a medline and you can find every journal on some subject, every article on, on a subject from every journal. You can just collate them if you run a medline. You, you can do that because you have memberships. A lot of those charge for, yeah. for you to be able to yeah. read the document. You yeah. have to pay a fee. So I pay for a membership so I can exactly. do that. So but. you and I could find the title and the abstract summary. But most doctors are members of a hospital. Yes, doctors are. But we're Do- talking about I'm people. talking about yeah, doctors who are looking for this. You can ask your doctor to look for this. We're not or, talking about people. We're no, talking about doctors. Yeah, you're right. We're not. <laughs> anyway, in any case, um, what I meant was. I'm sorry. We have there are tons of our of medical articles, and they look at estrogen and cholesterol, and they say, and this is one of the results of all these articles is. If you take estrogen, you increase your HDL, the good one, and you decrease your LDL, okay? So that's a component of heart disease, Mm -hmm. you know? So we always say cholesterol goes up, so uh, and and that causes heart disease. So if estrogen decreases it, that helps heart disease. Right. So if you have testosterone, Mm -hmm. testosterone decreases inflammation. Another component of heart disease is inflammation. Yes. So we so when we're looking at at replacement of hormones, or replacement of testosterone and estrogen for women and testosterone for men, we're de- decreasing inflammation, which would decrease heart disease. Right. So if we look at each component of heart disease, if we we look at muscle integrity of the heart, we find that testosterone improves muscle integrity. So that means the muscle is actually stronger and at just like muscles on our on the outside of our body that are inside our chest, but but are in our skeletal system are stronger with testosterone. So is so is our. So what you're describing is I'm describing each element of heart disease, but, but, but and they the all are made better by these hormones. But it's a classical problem of the six blind men describing the elephant. You know, they only describe what they are in contact with, mm-hmm. and what they are familiar with, and what they experience, and they don't. There's no place to stand to get the bigger picture, and to. Mm-hmm. Collate all of this, which is part of what we are trying to do for right. our our listeners, mm-hmm. uh, is to collate the research and the information to say the big picture is estrogen replacement therapy is good for you, won't hurt you, and will extend your life longer than not doing it. That's right. So. Hopefully, you will hear our message and go have this conversation with your doctor. Bang his head against the wall and say, dang, gummit, I want to do this. (laughs) Or say, find me somebody who will. Yeah. Yeah. If you you don't want to do it, find me somebody who will. Because you're, yeah. You can you can find another physician who will do that. So, there are people out there if you you look on the internet. Or you can come to us. (laughs) Yeah. So, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.